As a universally claimed god of gaming, never am wrong about anything guy, you may not believe this, but I haven't played every game ever created. Isn't that weird? Like, what an absolute fucker I am. So sometimes a game is hyped up, given a lot of mentions, and I'll try to give it a try and come on here and chat with you about this, that, and the other, and I know you've come to expect opinions on this, that, the other, and other, your mother, but I'm afraid I just don't have the ability to enjoy every game as it comes out. And that's why I have no nostalgic attachment to Nox. I actually never even heard of the game until I started playing every single ARPG ever made, but I definitely was enlightened about its quality, how great it was, how it was the Diablo 2 for cooler kids, and you know what I think, what I really felt about this purported 10 out of 10 action role-playing game? I thought it was fine. I don't know if I absolutely loved it, but you know, it's been good, the weather was nice when I played it, and I just found it was a comfy experience, and what, you wanted me to present you some actual important ideas? Fine, fuck you. Why not I just give you a word dump explanation of every thought I've ever had? So when I was born, I had a lot of, you know, yeah, yeah, mama. balls and shit, and you know, actually, to save time, I'll just start with my thoughts and feelings when I played Nox. The game is always claimed to be either inspired by Diablo 2 or trying to imitate it, or it's just a, you know, better or worse game than D2, and I keep thinking that this makes no sense at all. Firstly, and primarily because Nox is nothing like Diablo 2. And what would people say? Because it's isometric, it has a decent and comparable graphics for the time? Okay, well, here's Fallout, fucking Diablo clone this game. In fact, the two products are in very distinct places in the ARPG space, and in a lot of ways, I feel like Nox isn't even an ARPG. Yeah, yeah, okay, yep, Wikipedia to the rescue again, I get it, it technically is one, but there's no skill trees, no randomized loot, or even dynamic maps or endgame to talk about. Honestly, I deem this to be an AARPG instead of just an ARPG, because you got a little bit more adventure in there, you're maneuvering through a story more than actually just actioning all over the place. Nox is broken into chapters, and each chapter gives you a new quest to undertake. While there's some degree of side content, you've mostly got to trek through the experience much in the same way as everyone else. Now, there are some interesting distinctions, and the fact that the game is far more handcrafted works in its favor. Everything feels deliberate, and where things work, they work well. Encounters, secrets, shops, all that, they have a chance to flourish randomly simply because some dev thought it would be cool. We'll get into the gameplay, the progression systems, the items, the girth in my pants, all of it. Today, we'll determine if Nox is possibly the best ARPG ever made. I want to first mention that getting Nox to run was shit. I couldn't figure out how to stop it from literally crashing my entire computer until I found a fix that involved making the resolution worse. You know, that's great. Thanks for that. Nicely enough, I also found a way to widen the screen so we get to have more of a modern look to our unmodern old ass game that's begging to be run at 800 by 600. Oh, also, EA is a publisher, but don't worry, it's before they were the worst fucking game company ever. As for the game itself, we should be a little more story discussive today as opposed to the regular generally cussive I normally am. The game opens with Lilith from greatest game ever made, Diablo 4, who's channeling a spell to, I actually don't know what, shove spikes up everyone else's ass as we cut back and forth to our protagonist, the guy sitting on his couch, rubbing his balls, trying to get a TV to work. This is basically how I spend my time. He's got a house and he has a loving girlfriend cooking him bacon, so you know, I can't relate to this fucker at all. But regardless, later on, he gets sucked into the TV and falls down in front of Captain Crunch. Holy shit. The captain is not making it happen because he's bulbous and you're bulbin. What with your weird ass real world wonders, like your TV and your weird clothing, and in my case, the strangely alien appearance I have, like, why can I be a Doug character? Anyway, this guy is actually pretty chill and he offers you some advice as to where to go, and this leads into the most unique aspect of the gameplay experience the class choice. Now you get to select one of three classes in Nox, and each one offers a different campaign experience. While they all converge to have the same ending structure, the pathway to that point is distinct for each one, and it's really an interesting decision they made. Each class is almost a new game, and each one certainly plays way differently. The three in question are these Giga Chads? Like, what the fuck? Look at them, the warrior, the mage, the conjurer, each one offering all sorts of different strategies. As a real human being, man, you somehow have access to powerful magics and sword swinging abilities, so you're instructed to basically do menial quests until you're strong enough to fight Hecuba, which involves a more tedious collection of random stuff to create the staff of absolute fucking, a relic which you need for the final boss battle. The structure of the game is rigid, but there's more that meets the eye. For example, how many ARPGs have a physics engine in them? That's right, probably like some. I'm not sure. This many people like this quality of writing. But Nox allows you to push barrels, move things around, interact with your surroundings. Hell, even use line of sight for interesting effect. When I had to talk to this guy through a window to progress, it blew me away. That's really novel for this perspective. And that's the word I'd like to use, novel, because there's so many little nuances here. Putting out a fire with water, jumping over stuff, hiding in rooms, skateboarding around. Seriously, no one moves like this. Fucking Jack. That's the main guy's canonical name, by the way, Jack. As in Jack of all trades, Jack in the box, Jack from Jack in the box, not knowing Jack, jacked up, jacked off. List five more Jack terms in the comments and I'll give you $10 billion. I am Jeff Bez. Anyway, the game allowing you to interact in weird and unique ways is one of its greatest strengths. Plus, I love that there's a lot of secrets for players who are willing to try out random stuff. You hit walls 
walls, there might just be a hole for you to find. You get money, free experience, rare items, a lot of perks actually, just for being willing to going off the beaten path. But unfortunately, for having such a well fleshed out playground for you to explore, and it's confined to a small size, you can't go far, and since the game works on a chapter by chapter basis, there's not an opportunity to return to any area. Because of this, you are always a consistent power level, and therefore the difficulty suffers. Since enemies don't respawn and the experience they give diminishes as you level up anyway, you won't be getting outside of the bounds of power, so to speak. And since stat upgrades are wholly static and spells progress in the same order, you have no real way to distinguish your playthrough from anyone else's. Farming money isn't a concept because of no enemies respawning, and the only way to actually make cash is by selling drops. And the drops are pretty much 100% fixed. I can't completely determine if there's some luck to finding items that you want, but a lot of the time you find things with the exact same predictable certainty. So unfortunately, there's not much interest in combat or exploration because it's always the same. This means that the only replayability comes from trying out each class, so let's mosey on to talking about more specific gameplay. Well, it's frankly not the best, and I'm sorry to have to say that, the Nox fanboy crowd is already on their way here, I can hear the thunderous roar of both their steps. But again, I really like the way this game looks, and the combat feel is good, but oftentimes it gets floaty and odd. Through its weirdness, it has a certain charm to it, and I like that. What I don't like is that you have very few ways to engage enemies, with most of the strategies being either to like wander towards them and swing at the air hopelessly as they just gallop away or to cast one of your very expensive spells and just destroy everything with no effort. You're given a pitiful amount of experience for everything, drops are never interesting to look at, and overall there's not many juicy moments. Take here for example, any item has, you know, classics, damage per second, armor values, you know, okay good, and then either jack shit or maybe one line of text to supplement it, something like fire protection or confusion level 1. Also no item has a rarity, only descriptive words that range from donkey dick to good and the stats rise or fall dependent on the titling. Really, the point is, this is boring, and no part of the problem is helped when gear just explodes upon reaching its durability limit. Truly, I never even used something for a long time, I just kept having it break unexpectedly and throw on another item I had lying around. There's a lot of types of weapons and armor, I can give Nox credit for that, but beyond basic D&D rules like warriors can equip plate, wizards can't, etc, I have nothing to tell you. What I can inform you about is the difference between your three big class E's and how the warrior is somehow the most boring one. Usually, Sword Swing Man is fun, but in this case, you get five abilities that are absolute snoozers. Walk carefully? What kind of fucking warrior is this guy? An employee of Bed Bath & Beyond? Why not, like, hit them really, really way too fucking hard? Take this skill, it lets you see better. I mean, why not just buy some eyeglasses? The best skill you get is this headlong dash into an enemy. It does really great damage and combos well with this other interesting ability of the grappling hook, because if you whiff your charge, you hit a wall and take a bit of damage and daze yourself for a moment. That is the most fun part, having the risk reward of running into a wall. The rest of his combat though, you just slide around and chase down enemies, and there's minimal ways to get in melee range and not get hit. You can swing and step away if you enjoy fights taking two hours. Now the Conjurer is more up my alley because there's a lot more spells to think about, 12 in total. You're a hybrid between a physical attacker and a spell caster, which gives a nicer flow of combat possibilities. Sometimes you'll stick them, otherwise you'll dick them, very fun. That being said, this is the minion class, and I'm not altogether interested in minion based based ARPG gameplay, unless I get to throw bears at people. The charm monster idea is cool, but most things die so easily I don't even end up caring. Now the wizard is more up my aisle, with an enormous selection of spells, with many of them doing pretty satisfying damage. You can't equip anything, but that doesn't matter when you're just pushing in posteriors. To sum up this rundown though, I would say the game is bland by the standards the future would set. With almost every encounter I was checking my watch because they all get repetitive, and with no real drops happening, the game doesn't scratch the itch I want from an ARPG. Gear is paramount to the experience being good I have found, because really, how can you make isometric, repetitive, never-ending combat loops continuously innovative and fun? You need good gear, or incentives to look for gear, which Nox doesn't have either. It's just when you find no reason to engage in the combat that it falls down, and since everything is overly basic, you're just trying to get to the end of it. And for me, it was desperately trying to run to the end, because surprisingly, you can die amazingly easily. And because of the difficulty, combat actually does become somewhat fun and satisfying as you try to Metal Gear Solid the environments. You play less like a warrior and more like a spy, going in and out of buildings, grabbing steak and eating it raw with your bare hands in one bite. Are we sure this guy is fucking human after all? Add in the limited visibility due to lighting, the physics engine, and the odd way characters speak and interact with you, and Nox is insanely memorable. It's unlike any of the games we've looked at so far, completely odd in presentation. It feels like I'm playing Simcoaster, but I'm allowed to kill people. Although, hold on, I haven't met my daily quote of bitching 
bitching about something, I want to mention that your inventory is maybe the worst one I've ever seen with both weight as a restricting factor and the fact of needing to use a magnifying glass button to examine the stats on things. This is really just a case of 2000ism, everything used to be really hard to read and compare, and it's something that fortunately has been improved in the modern day with modern games. Yep, we're in a better spot now, definitely. But I feel like the humor the game adopts, the weird half fantasy, half realistic style does well to set Nox apart. It's a charming experience, a fun nostalgic memory of a time where games were just trying to be a bit of fun. And I feel like if you're into computer games, it's worth looking into Nox. For this era of gaming, you have to appreciate the full motion video that they put at the beginning and the end, the three different endings, everything is voice acted. I'm impressed constantly with the art and design in Nox. That being said, the game bored me. I tried so hard to like it, and I got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. I couldn't remotely say that to a new player of the genre that Nox is the greatest ARPG ever made. It's just too restricted. There's not enough anything. I think it's best to consider it to be like a really good and enjoyable D&D campaign that your friends made. It's satisfying for time, but you're not going to be begging to replay it again and again. And I feel like to be the best ARPG ever made, you have to have some good replayability. So for that reason and all the other reasons, we'll abandon our look at Nox now and neander towards, let's see, what game is there? I actually don't know yet. I have four games installed ready to go. So yes, I'll get back to you soon. Take care. Enjoy the weather. Relax. Take it easy. Enjoy your breakfast. All right.